found another volunteer. He's all yours. Engineers and civilians can protect comrades and squad with shields. Shields are great. In the first version of the game I played, they did not look effective, but they, they actually super are. For upgrading the generator, I really like industry. I'll have to test it one of these days, but I suspect it makes guns get produced faster too. Now we can send expeditions to the surface. An expedition requires three soccer volunteers and some supplies. Boy, are we glad to see you! I found another volunteer. He's all yours. You cannot completely eradicate the moss using molotovs. Realistically, because I haven't expanded very far outward, uh, the vats and dogs have a bigger patrol range, so my range of operations is actually very limited comparatively. Alright, I can handle the dogs or the vat monsters, the ambushers. Not both at the same time, especially if they show up in different directions. Now, I can jump into one of these rooms and hide out the night there, like I did the very first episode. I will probably get hit by the ambushers. It is worth running down here because I have never seen a spore launcher uh, active on day 10 on this side of the bridge. I have, however, seen as many as three outgrowths. That's easily nine and twelve mutants.
That's one of the reasons why I kept getting cut off guard last time, the first episode. Well, not first episode, but first recording, is because it wasn't quite pink mode yet, and enemies were just suddenly killing me from the breach, and I thought I had sealed the breach. The dogs do like five damage. So they are very devastating. I don't think they should do as much damage as they do to walls, though. I can understand they do a lot of damage to the person. They shouldn't do that much to the wall. I got six diggers with me now. Let's get my stalkers up and running. You should feel free to move engineers off the post-game factories during the day. You shouldn't really need the defensive concrete bonus, but you might utilize the offensive ammo bonus. Still, if you're if you're not actively going out there, go ahead and move those engineers to do something else, such as make shields and molotovs. Stay with the group. Earlier, I said that a earlier, much earlier, I said a digger is half as fast as a dweller in building. Well, I sat there and counted. A digger will take ten hammers to make two planks uh, when rebuilding a level one wall from scratch. So it's been destroyed. He's, he's just building it up. And so I, I counted every plank and so forth. It's for him to get a hundred percent, a digger would need to strike with a hammer ninety-eight times. A dweller would need to strike forty-nine times. And an engineer would need to strike 25 times. I found the 
another volunteer. He's all yours. Guys on the left, please take care of business. Commander, the drifters are unwilling to sign up. They're saying your base is no more room. Direct. In order, technology goes. One beaker for faster diggers, two beakers for taller wooden walls, four beakers for your scrap warehouse, five big beakers for engineer breaches. Assuming you don't get any modifiers, then in your second generator, it takes eight beakers to get the engineer turret. So it's the first technology after your upgrade. Then it's nine beakers for concrete walls, which actually comes with two upgrades. So you can upgrade twice with that one tech. On the third generator, which requires fuel, it takes 11 beakers for steel walls and 14 beakers for mines, and then followed by automatic scrap drones.
Commander, the drifters are unwilling to sign up. They're saying your base is no more room. First left wall, you unlock the engineer and the Molotov workshop, though the Molotov requires you to bring home fuel. You don't actually have to upgrade your generator to, to get the Molotovs, you just need the fuel. The second left wall gets you a house, and if you have it, the, the third left wall gets you a fire barrel and a sniper workshop. The fourth left wall gets you the defensive factory for surviving 11 days on any difficulty, and field kitchen which is unlocked when you upgrade your generator. The fifth wall guards a fire barrel and another housing unit. The sixth left wall guards your slug farm, a fire barrel, and a housing unit. So on the left, you have three housing units, three fire barrels, and your field kitchen. Those are the major points of interest. On the right side, you, your first wall guards your digger and your shield workshops. The second wall guards your stalker and mine workshops, as well as your closest fire barrel. Your third wall guards just a house. Your fourth wall secures an ammo factory, the fifth wall guards the maintenance shaft to the surface, and a fire barrel. And finally, the sixth wall guards a slug farm and a fire barrel. So on the right you have one housing unit, three fire barrels, and your ammo factory. If you assume that mutants do 1 damage, then exploding spiders do 3 damage, mortars do 4 damage, mutant dogs do 5 damage, and what I call the mega grub, that's the thing that you hit twice, blows up and gives you food, it does 8 damage. The flower does 13 damage. As for how many hit points your people have, again these are my notes on things as of my current version on May 31st. Ivan has 20 hit points, a digger and a stalker both have 10 hit points, an engineer has 9 hit points, a dweller and a sniper have 6 hit points. Yeah. <laughs> 
now build more durable walls. Field kitchen can be set up here. This will help attract new followers. Before, the, before it becomes light pink, if I can send the stalkers to the surface, they will be here the next day. Once it gets light pink, then it takes two days. Day 15 will be the siege, so the day I can't go out will be day 15. You can actually go out, but you'll lose two stalkers. Now one time when I was experimenting, the game kind of glitched out and it killed my stalkers in the elevator. The elevator came down and the doors opened, but nothing next transpired. What happened was, it wasn't an event, as far as I know. There was a mutant that spawned in this room at some point and just killed my stalkers. It was just a random mutant. I just want the engineer to stay here. I get you a volunteer. He's skinny, yes, but sinewy. He's yours for the taking. Team to base. We are coming back from the surface. Commander, there's a huge wave of mutants coming from the right. Get ready.
The mutants are already here at the right wall. Where is everybody? The surface is a dangerous place with all kinds of terrible creatures wandering around the thick fog. We saw an intact gas station. Next time we'll try to gather some fuel. That'll be a risky venture though. Before we make a move, we should stay put for a day until the mutants leave. We're gonna get the civilian supplies. The several blue flasks turn out to be just the science beakers. They spawn right at the elevator, though. That's so. If you're walking out of the time, you won't actually see it. <laughs> you have to. You'll eventually come back and pick it up, though, if you ever want to use the elevator again. Also, if you're transitioning between rooms when this pop-up appears, you will be soft locked. Oh, this is really bad. I thought I could handle it without those three. Someone in the comments asked me why I don't use shields in melee. This is why. I just go flying away and I can't guard them for long. And I feel like your shields get easily dispatched. Suicide bombing, the suicide bomber of the bear took out seven people. One of the progression unlocks is a med bay, which gives you guys a chance to be revived. But someone needs to apply it. Stupid, it's stupid, but your your leader can't do it. Hmm. 
I left them in here for the day just to get them ready to go on an expedition during the peaceful day. And I don't even have the food for it. so frustrated right now.